Hallelujah. Let's give a hand to Jesus. Thank you. At the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light, and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there. By faith, I received my sight. And now, I'm happy all the way. Let's give another hand to Jesus for what he did for us. Our scripture reading comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 25. And I'll be reading from verse 14. Matthew 25, reading from verse 14. We shall read a couple of verses all the way to verse 25. And as we find uh, the text, uh, let me once again welcome us. Uh, those who are visiting from outside the country, my brother uh, Deacon Malcolm from First Pastor Houston, uh, the team from there, welcome, welcome. You are friends of this church, and I remember the planting of Northgate. Your church gave the initial gift that got us in that direction of planting Northgate Church, which is now a large congregation. And so when you get back home, thank your church for that support. Uh, we also appreciate, of course, um, the Kalpas, uh, Dr. Christopher, and Dashana, and Adash, and Lavinia, the little girl here, uh, who is actually African. Because I, I watched when we were singing, she was actually moving and dancing. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so we are so happy to have many visitors and the others who are here for the first time and also following online. We appreciate you from all over the world. Matthew chapter 25 from verse 14. This is what the Bible says. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, uh, to another two bags, and to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five more bags. So also the one uh, with two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received one bag uh, went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other, uh, the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I'll put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. In verse 22, the Bible goes on to say, The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrust me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. This is God's word. Father, in Jesus' name. We celebrate the fact that uh, we can gather on a Sunday like today and be able to listen to your word. And God, we celebrate the fact that the word is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit, joint and marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And therefore, as we come to the word, my God, we understand its power, uh, it carries life, and Lord, the power to transform us. And uh, we are coming to hear from you. So Holy Spirit, take over. Open the, uh, the ears of our hearts. And Lord, cause us to receive your word today. And as I pray for those who are in person in the service, I'm also thanking you for the ones who are watching online. And I pray all of us shall enjoy the bread of life. Because I've prayed in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we all say, Amen. Amen. We may have a seat. Now, let me just remind us that you are, you are looking good. 
And probably you can tell somebody next to you that you're looking good, better than yesterday, and tomorrow you will shine. Spark, meta, meta, sparkle, sparkle, and wear shades. Hallelujah. I think we've had the occasion to just celebrate one another. And uh, let's never take it for granted when you have somebody next to you. Uh, you never know. That person could open a door for you. And so take care of the person next to you and the one behind you, in front of you, uh, by praying for them and constantly blessing them. The title of the message today is Stewardship of God's Abundance. Stewardship of God's Abundance. And uh, there are three areas I would like us to consider. One, the gift of abundance. Number two, the purpose of abundance. And number three, the reward of abundance. Stewardship of God's abundance. Uh, you know that um, the open, open door uh, is a symbol of God's generosity. And when you read Revelation chapter 3 and verse 8, God is said, uh, saying, I hold the key of David. I've opened um, a door before you that no man can shut. And I want us to understand and be reminded this morning that there is a door that is open before you. And my prayer <clears throat> today is that you would actually see it. The open door God has opened. It's a symbol of God's generosity, the open door of salvation, the open door of his goodness, the open door of healing, the open door of deliverance, the open door of restoration. God has opened the door. In other words, he has not shut the door and his provisions are available for us. And also, um, you remember in Revelation chapter 4 and verse 1, John the Revelator sees an open door. And uh, after this, I looked, and there before me, a door standing open in heaven. God has chosen to open his gates. In Deuteronomy 28 and verse 12, talking about open doors and open gates, he says, I've opened the heavens. Deuteronomy 28 verse 12. The Lord will open the heavens, the storehouse of his bounty, to send rain on your land in season, and to bless all the work of your hands. You will lend to many nations but will borrow from none. And so we have a generous God. He's not stingy. He doesn't have his hands clasped, you know, I mean, uh, holding on to things. God has actually opened the door. And that is why when you pray, you don't have to struggle in the place of prayer. God has already opened that door. There are no doors you're going to open. No, 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 no. You just pray. God has opened the door and God comes through for us. Stewardship of God's abundance. First of all, the gift of abundance. The gift of abundance. And this is stewardship received. The gift of abundance, stewardship uh, received. I want us to know that there is nothing we have that we have not received. And therefore, we all owe it all to God. You know, when we come to God in worship and we lift our hands before him, is because everything we are and we have, whether it's breath, you know, or whether it's wealth, whatever it is, it has come from the Lord. And so we owe it all to him. Everything that we have has come from God. And God is a giver. God, not only is he a giver, God is a generous giver. He is a good giver. He is an amazing, amazing, amazing giver. And if you need to receive the gift of abundance, therefore, you don't look this way or look that way or look the other way. You actually look up to God. And uh, according to Philippians 4.19, you say, my God, supply every need of mine. Philippians 4.19. According to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And so let me uh, just underline the fact that God is a God of abundance. In fact, if there is another name I would give God, it would simply be abundance. And so to know God is to walk in abundance. To know God is to receive abundance. God is enough. God is enough. And to have him is to have everything. He is the God of abundance. And because he has every resource and everything that we need, then he releases to us, and uh, we receive these gifts. And these gifts he gives us, they are supposed to be stewarded in the right way. In fact, the word stewardship, the way I have defined it, 
It means profitable management of something entrusted to one's care. Let me just repeat. Profitable management of something entrusted to one's care. God has gifts and he is generous. He's a God of abundance and he has chosen to give gifts to his people. So the text we read in uh, verse uh, 14 and 15, this is what the Bible says. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The wealth of God or the abundance of God was not put together for angels. When you go back to Genesis, when God created things, then he put them there in the garden. Genesis chapter 1 from verse 28, if you give me on the screen, you realize that what God put together, he actually put it together for you and me, not for angels. No, it is for you and me. And uh, the abundance of God is everywhere. This is what the Bible says. God bless them and say to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish um, in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds in the sky and all the creatures that move along the ground, everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. And then God saw that it was uh, all that he made was good. And then there was evening and there was morning. When you look around and you see the trees, you see the birds, and you look at everything that you see around us, it's a picture of God's abundance. And uh, these things that God has put around us are there for us. And it is God who gives us these gifts. There are other gifts that he has given us in terms of talents and abilities that are inside us. And all of them, we owe these gifts uh, to him. And he's a God of abundance. Like I said, his hands are not stingy. He is ready uh, to release uh, and give us. John 1 verse 16 says the following regarding the abundance of God and his grace. John uh, chapter 1 verse 16. Out of his fullness, we have all received grace in place of grace already given. So out of his fullness, then we receive. And let me say that God as a source is not limited. And there are some people in the Bible who discovered that. Like the widow in 2 Kings chapter 4, you remember she had a little jar of oil and uh, they owed so much to the creditors. And by the time <clears throat> Elisha comes to them, they owe so much and uh, the creditors have come. And you know what? Elisha tells them, go get as many jars as you can uh, and uh, lock yourself in. And you know, as she continued pouring from her little jar into these jars, every jar got filled. In fact, what limited her was the number of jars that they actually collected. And I want to say that God's abundance, no, none of us can be able to uh, exhaust it. And God wants to release his abundance to his people. And so you see this uh, servant, uh, this man here gave his wealth. He gave out his wealth like God has given us his wealth. To one, he gave five bags of gold. To another one, he gave two bags of gold. And to another one, he gave one bag of gold. Let me quickly say here that everybody is gifted. And anyone who says that there are some categories of people that are not gifted is not telling the truth. Everyone listening to me <clears throat> here today is gifted. And uh, you have very, there is treasure inside you. Uh, you have very, very important gifts that God has actually given to you. James 1.17 says, Every good gift and every perfect endowment comes from above, from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. And so as we get started, I want us to remember that God is a source, God is a giver, he is not stingy, and God has already released his wealth, he has already released his gifts to his people, and we are the people of God, and we are gifted. 
In fact, I would like you to say uh, right now, if we can, I am gifted. Just say it. It's important. Yeah, I am gifted. And so if somebody told you that uh, you are not worthy because you don't have a gift, now remember the Bible teaches us that you and I are gifted. Some of the gifts we have are spiritual gifts. And uh, when you read 1 Corinthians 12, 1 Peter 4, Romans chapter 12, uh, there, there's an outline of gifts of the, of the Holy Spirit. And uh, when you go to 1 Corinthians 12, the Bible says the Spirit of God apportions to everyone. You know, everyone. And we have all been gifted. So, even in the church, as you have come to the church, God has not called us to be pew sitters because there is something he has put in us. Every one of us is gifted. So, the, one of the biggest lies of the devil is to tell you that you don't have a gift. The gift of abundance has been released. And the gift of abundance is already in you. So you have received the capacity of stewardship. You know, at the core of stewardship is something given. At the center of stewardship is something you have received, is something given. Because you cannot steward something that you have not uh, been given. And without God, we are nothing. Without God, we have nothing. In fact, John 15, 5 says, Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. So uh, without him, we are nothing. And without him, we can do nothing. And so this morning is a good morning to celebrate the gifts God has given us. And uh, there are those with five bags of gold. There are those with two bags of gold. There are those with one bag of gold. Uh, it doesn't matter. That gift is going to do something. But you first of all have to acknowledge and understand that you are gifted. So all of them were given something. And each one of us has been given something. You know that I'm passionate about Africa. And if there is a continent in the world that is gifted... It is the continent of Africa. Under the soil, the minerals that God has trusted us with, entrusted, Africa entrusted. There are so many, many gifts under the soil. When you go to the waters, whether they are oceans or rivers or lakes, uh, there is so much that God has put in those spaces. When you come above the ground, you think about the mountains and you think about everything else that we have, it is just amazing. And let me say something about Africa as well. God has given us good weather. Why don't you appreciate him? He's given us good weather. <clears throat> my daughter right now is in Toronto, Canada, and I know she's following up this service, my fourth-born uh, daughter. And she sent me a video yesterday. They were driving from one side of Toronto to another side of Toronto. And uh, there were snowflakes. Yeah, there were like stones, snowflakes. They are falling on the screen. I could see the wiper moving, and I could see clearly there are snowflakes coming on the car. And uh, it, was <clears throat> it was cold. Pretty cold, I think seven, six, seven degrees. And for us Kenyans, that is very, very cold. You know, seven degrees, six degrees on the Celsius scale. It's pretty, pretty cold. And I, I, I can see my daughter missing home. Let me tell her on camera. <laughs> Girl, God is with you there. And God will keep you warm. And therefore in that land, just do exploits. <laughs> yes, because the anointing of the Lord is upon you in Jesus' name. Upon that land. Hallelujah. God has given us amazing gifts. And uh, these gifts that God given us are not ornaments. These are not ornaments you hang around for exhibition or to be looked at. And I'll be coming to that in the second point. It's not, not, it's not ornamental. God, God has a reason he's given us this gift. But the first point I want us to appreciate, sometimes we don't open our eyes to see and acknowledge that we are gifted. And uh, you will find that a lot of people don't use their gifts because first of all, they actually don't know, uh, you know, or they have not cared to know. That you are, they are gifted. And any one of us, if I pick at random, we are multi-gifted. We got a gift mix. 
And, uh, and so I celebrate everyone uh, through this message, those watching online and also those in person. And I celebrate you and honor you because you are gifted. And God, looking at you, is very happy. He made you and he also invested in you. And he has put his gifts inside you. So the first thing is we are gifted. Out of God's abundance, there is a connection between me. I am plugged into his ab abundance. And because of that link between me and God, I must start at the premise, I am gifted. Everywhere I will go, I will start on the premise, I am gifted. And you know, when I go around the world, uh, Deacon Wairago, to minister, uh, I, I go with my head high. I'm going to South Africa, Johannesburg, later um, in the year to do a global conference. And I stand there from Kenya, hallelujah, addressing people from every nation. And I stand there with every confidence, knowing there's something in me. I am gifted. So one is given five, one is given two, one is given one. That is an illustration that everybody has something. And we all begin with something. But then uh, we must look at the purpose of abundance. The purpose of abundance. And this is stewardship invested. Stewardship invested. The purpose of abundance. In verse 16 to verse 18 in the text of the day, the man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five uh, bags more. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. I did say earlier that these gifts God has given us are not ornaments. They are supposed to be put to work. The gifts that God has given his people here in Africa, they are supposed to be put to work. And I believe that God is calling us into a season of work. He has said, I have gifted you. Now he's commissioning us to work. And those gifts need to be put into employment. They need to be unleashed. They need to be invested. And so the first level of stewardship is reception of something. But the second level of stewardship is responsible uh, investment. You know, invest, uh, profitable or fruitful investment. And so God is expecting that something good will come out of us. In, in John chapter 15, verse 8, uh, Jesus expects that we shall bear much fruit. John 15 and verse 8. And this is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. One mark of a disciple of Jesus Christ is that wherever they are placed around the world, it doesn't matter which community, wherever they are placed, they are fruitful. That is a characteristic of a disciple of Jesus Christ. So the purpose of abundance is actually to be sown a seed. John 12, verse 24. John 12, uh, verse 24. Instead of uh, eating the seed, sow it. Verily, uh, truly I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. And the Bible goes on and on. The Apostle Paul in uh, Philippians chapter 3 outlines his seven credentials. He, he's a very gifted guy. Seven credentials. And then he brings them to the cross. And he invests these credentials at the cross for kingdom glory, kingdom purpose, and kingdom fruit. And every gift God has given me has a purpose dimension. And my prayer for each one of us is that every gift that you have will find space to grow, space to expand, and every gift shall fetch a harvest. You know, you, you come with sheaves. You know, you, you, come, you come with a harvest. When we go into the marketplace, God plants there, plants us there in the various platforms where we are. And God is expecting that in that place, you shall bear much fruit. And so the Apostle Paul invested his life through service and giving, and that is the wisdom of investment, service and giving. Through service and giving, invested his life 
to the missionary enterprise. Now, Paul was based in a church called Antioch. Paul of Tarsus yeah, goes to Antioch, and then the Antioch church discovers his gift and strength through the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 13. In fact, I was preaching that yesterday in Ivasha. Uh, I had the joy of opening a new church, a new church plant yesterday in Naivasha, and also ordaining, uh, ordaining a new pastor there. And it's a very nice place. The location of that church, you have a very good view of the lake, you know, a very good view of the lake. And you know, the Apostle Paul, because he planted his gift in the right soil, in the right place, you know, wise investment. The best way to invest is in the kingdom of God. Then God took Paul with all his weaknesses and strengths and then working through him, Acts 1, 8, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the world. In other words, it's like dropping a stone in water and then concentric circles, you know, the effects of that stone is felt 360, 360 in expanding, you know, all around to the ends of the earth. So the Apostle Paul gives his credentials to Christ and uh, at the cross surrenders his life and God uses him greatly. In Galatians 2.20, the Bible says, Paul said, I have been crucified with Christ. That's how he sows his seed. I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and he gave himself for me. And so he wants to do like Christ. In fact, 1 Corinthians 11.1, 1, he tells the congregation, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Jesus gave his all. And Deacon Wairago, leading us in the Lord's Prayer, reminded us that. And uh, there's a critical principle there of uh, fruitfulness, you know, by giving our all. And so Paul gives his life in his season and generation completed to God, and God takes that life. All his merits, all his credentials, they are put in one basket called the kingdom basket, and he surrenders everything for the glory of God, and God takes it and uses it. And I believe when uh, Paul gets to heaven, Jesus is very happy to receive him uh, because of the way he has employed his life or invested his life here on planet Earth. And I wonder with the gifts that you have, are there some still in parking? They are in parking stage? Or are you on maintenance mode? God wants us to go to a place of profit, a place of fruit, a place of growth, and a place of expansion. And uh, my second prayer of the day today uh, is not that just acknowledging the gift in us, but praying that that gift will find space where it can actually grow and expand and actually thrive. In Isaiah 40, 31, we are supposed to have wings, isn't it? It says, they that wait upon the Lord, they shall do what? They shall fly with wings like eagles. Whatever has been obstructing your expansion, your thriving, your flourishing, I break it now in Jesus' name. That gift is released. Hallelujah. And it is invested. You know, we need to have more courage in Africa so that these gifts that we have all around us can actually be exploited for the benefit of everybody. We have an economy right now that is struggling, and you look at a population vis-a-vis -vis the national cake, and uh, even if you try to cut it to get everybody something, now they will end up with very, very little. Now, do you know for us to flourish and thrive, we have to grow the cake? I think that's the only way. Make the cake larger. Work with what God has given us, and this country is blessed. The other day, because I travel a lot, um, I was in the National Park uh, on Monday, and uh, my friends visit the National Park. Nairobi has a National Park. I like enjoy the abundance of God. And the Safari Walk is a place I like praying. Every Monday, I go praying. And I took time walking around, you know, looking at the buffalo. But the one that really mesmerized me was the rhino. Ionikionjo, so that you can go. Go find out. <laughs> What is this that really mesmerized uh, Pastor Sam? And everybody who came around was just saying, wow, you know, that rhino that is in there. And I was, I was saying, I think we have not marketed our country enough. 
just the tourist resource alone, you know, the gift of animals and, and what? And national parks and mountains and lakes and rivers. It is just like a sleeping giant. And as a pastor, you are praying for your city, you are praying for your nation, and God says, yeah, you are praying, but the ball is in your court. Go tell the people they got to do something. The gift that God has given to us was not to be an ornament. It was supposed to be put to work. And I believe that our future is bright in Jesus' name. And right now, I am just praying that every gift is unwrapped, every gift is employed and put to work, and every gift is released, and there is no gift that is small. You know, in John chapter 6, there was a boy, uh, verse 11. Just give me John chapter 6, verse 11. John chapter 6, verse 11. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, distributed to those who are, who are seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had all uh, had, had enough to eat, he said to the disciples, gather the pieces that are left over. And that is stewardship, by the way. The pieces that are uh, left over, so waste should not be part of our portion. Let nothing be wasted. Do you know 5,000 people plus were fed from the lunch of a small boy? And there were, it is described, small, five small barley loaves and, and two small fish. And uh, what did this young boy do? The young boy invested his lunch in the right place. He placed it in the kingdom path. And kingdom dynamics worked around that lunch. And that lunch was able to feed uh, the, the world at that time, that world at that time. You, God has given you an idea. It's supposed to come out. It is supposed to find its place. It's supposed to flourish. It's supposed to expand. A single idea can bless the whole world. But don't think that that gift is small. That would be a problem. What we need to do is to begin to release it. And I thank God for our young people. Young people of Africa, you are blessed, 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 blessed. Young people, you are blessed. And I thank God for the courage of this Joshua generation who are beginning to step out into new areas and new territories, and they are not afraid. And I want to say to the young generation that uh, your stepping out is not in vain. May God step, uh, bless every step. In fact, Joshua 1, 3 says, everywhere you step, I've done what? I've given to you. Be courageous, young generation of Africa. And I thank God for your courage. Like David, with a small stone, a little gift in the form of a stone. He just picked it from a river and a sling. And then he releases it. And suddenly, a national problem is solved. From a little stone, coming from a young man, 17 years old, it is released in his strength. But God amplifies the strength of the stone and causes it, plus the accuracy. You know, God works around it and brings down Goliath. And Israel can sleep in peace and they can rest and enjoy their meals because a young man with a little gift he had, he just simply employed it and released it and made a difference. And so young people like the ones who lead us here in singing, and by the way, remember they are volunteers this team here. Let's appreciate them. Let's give a hand to the Lord. Yeah. These volunteers, they come very, very early. In fact, Saturday to practice, to harmonize, and they're investing their gift. And when they come here, they lead us. And don't you uh, feel great when this worship is happening? Yeah, they're investing their gift. And also, uh, Akina Fura, uh, Fura here, uh, the, the ones who do voice. Uh, Alex Button, I think he'll come in the second service. And you're giving your voice because God has given you voice. And you go into the media and you put voice broadcasting our services around the world. Can you imagine? That voice is being heard by thousands of people, Europe, Americas, Asia, everywhere, just because of your contribution. These guys on camera and the ones on instruments behind and the ones media, by the, by the way, they are really working right now. They are putting their gift to work. And they are catching my image. I hope they're doing a good job. <laughs> and they are pushing sound and picture. We have sound and picture. They are pushing sound and picture to the last man, last woman on the mile. And we really appreciate the ministry of these young people of our continent. Let's give a hand to the Lord. Thank you very much. And so the purpose of abundance is that it's not a relic. It is not something for the museums. 
No, that gift is not ornamental. That gift is a seed of multiplication. And therefore, God wants you to do something with that seed and with that gift. But finally, of course, the reward of abundance. The reward of abundance. Stewardship celebrated. And uh, a couple of verses that I'll read there from verse 19. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled uh, accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, a good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a, with a few things. I'll put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I'll put you in charge of many things. Come and share in your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one bag of gold said, master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked Lazy servant. See, laziness. Laziness is a problem. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I return, I, I returned, I would have received it back with interest. So take the bag of gold from him. Give it to the one who has ten bags. For whoever has will be given more and uh, they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken away from them. The celebration of this abundance uh, properly applied in verse 21, that's what I want to read as a celebration. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The best way to get a promotion is to, exp to use the gift God has given you and multiply it. Then the master comes and says, yeah, you have done well in, on level one, and you have brought profit. I want to entrust you with more. If you are faithful with little, God will make you ruler over much. I want to repeat that statement. If you are faithful with little, God will do it. He will make you a ruler over much. And so if you want your estates to grow, or your territory and your reach to grow, Begin where you are, and uh, right where you are, be faithful with the gift that you have. And when you're faithful with little, God will make you ruler of a match. This church, our history, is that we started in a very small place. And some of you might not know that we started at the junction of Chiromo Lane and Ojijo Road. And you need to visit there sometime if you've never seen where we started. There is a junction of Chiromo Lane and Ojijo Road. There's a petrol station there. Just behind a petrol station, there are some buildings that look kind of hidden. And recently when I've gone there, there are even some other high-rise buildings uh, that have come there, really dwarfing where we all started. And I drove there with my daughter. We were discussing it. That's where we started. Yeah. And while we were there, we determined to be faithful with a little space, and the little that God has given us, had given us. And let me tell you, it was about 200 people. Yeah, Dr. Kappa reminds me. Some key people. One of them was the former president, Daniel Toroitich Araf Moy, who loved to come you know, for the services, and he really used to enjoy. And uh, you know God is faithful. The world will see your faithfulness. Hallelujah. The world will celebrate your stewardship of that gift. And more than the world, heaven is looking and is saying, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with little now I am trusting you. I am entrusting you with more. I shall make you a ruler of a match. Some people want to graduate from little to much using shortcuts. 
and using all kinds of... The key here is a stewardship of the gift. And you know, he noticed. And God used him. Hallelujah. For us to get this piece of land. In fact, it was two five-acre pieces. They were amalgamated. Isn't that the case? Yeah. Two five-acre pieces that were amalgamated under one title. And here we are celebrating the next level and the abundance of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and so when we say God is good all the time, all the time God is good, when you use your gift, people will notice and they will note you. I remember how I became a pastor those early days coming to church. We were washing. We used to wash the church and then uh, arrange the chairs and then I started leading Bible studies and somebody here, you know, there started saying, Oh, ni pastor, who you? Vida tunaona na endelea. You know, now I was a young person. Akina, uh, Dr. Gishane uh, identified me, started encouraging me. Dr. Charles Stop, who is now with the Lord, uh, with the Lord, uh, our pastor then, identified me, identified Pastor Ambrose. It's very interesting. And then, you know, mentoring and uh, nurturing us because there was a gift that they, he saw or they saw and the gift was being deployed, was already employed. It's already moving. You know, you're not working with stationary things. We are looking for something that's already mobile, something that is already moving. It is easier to help somebody who is roasting maize by the side of the road there because there is an entrepreneurial gift that they are, they are manifesting. It is easier to grow their business and say, hey, yeah, like yesterday, I was coming up, my mahu, I love roast maize. And there are those guys who sell me. <laughs> Dr. Gishan is telling you, don't, don't be stopping there. Yeah, on the, on the hill. And so I buy like two. So I can eat one after the other. You know, roast maize. I, I love roast maize. <laughs> and you find a young man who is either polishing shoes or, um, I mean, roasting maize by the roadside. That is the guy to help. That is the guy to grow to the next level. Because they are faithful with the little that they have, and now they are ready for the next level. And if you go inject more capital inside the business of this maize roaster, next time you come, they'll have something larger. Maybe they'll have another stand on the side selling something different, and they are diversifying, and they are growing. God is looking at that business you have, and he's saying, I want to take it to the next level. But I want you to be faithful where you are, faithful with the little that you have. And God is looking and he's saying, I am going to raise you to the next level. I want to say Africa's next level is ready. Yeah. Can I repeat that? <laughs> Africa's next level is ready. In the abundance of God, which was point number one, it is there. You know, it is ready. God wants us to put our gifts to work. And God wants us to, to be faithful uh, in every place where we are. And that level is, is we shall get there very quickly. In fact, this year, our key word is accelerate. And uh, I pray now, in the name of Jesus, that our next level is accelerated. And as I talk about Africa, it's all of us. We all have a next level that we desire to move into. And God is saying, I want to move you into the next level. And therefore, God did not call us for maintenance. God called us for fruit, and he called us for profit. And therefore, he invested in every one of us and gave us each one of us a gift. Then he creates an environment within which we can grow. And then, finally, he comes back and holds us to account. Some of these accounting is, is, a, is a voice of the Holy Spirit who is in us. And he keeps saying, this far, God gave you this, God gave you that, God gave you this other, this, this other thing. How far have you done with this one? How far have you gone with this one? And there's almost like a judgment from inside. It's a, it's a quiet voice from inside, which is supposed to help us rise to the next level and calibrate us uh, for the next level that begins to remind you, you are gifted, you need to apply your gifts, and that God is happy that when these gifts are actually deployed. And I pray that as that voice is speaking to your heart, that particular area, coming back to the young people again, like these ones who sing, uh, lead worship here, there's somebody, uh, and I've said this before, God has given you a song to release. That song is not yours. That song belongs to the nations. 
And maybe you are thinking there are better singers, there are all these other people around me, this gift of mine is going nowhere. I am speaking to somebody, maybe online. That song is what the world is waiting for. Now simply be courageous and release it. And God will work with what is released. Let me put it this way. The miracle is in what is released. The miracle is not in what is hoarded. So this one guy, a guy with one talent, he went and buried it. That's not a good strategy. The miracle is not in what is buried or hoarded. The miracle is in what is given. And so, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God gave his son. And because of that, the harvest of nations, people coming from all ends of the earth are coming to the Father and they are coming to the kingdom because at the center of that movement is a gift. And at the center of that gift, uh, that, that, that movement is that gift, uh, the, our Lord Jesus Christ. And he laid his life down, he gave it all, and because of that, it was not lost. What you give fetches a miracle, and what you release is never lost. That's the kingdom. And so I commit us into the whole journey, you know, of acknowledging you are gifted, determining to employ and put that gift to work, and uh, finally celebrating the reward of that, of that gift. And so the issue is not abundance. The issue is the release of the abundance. God has a lot. And we cannot just keep praying, give me, give me, give me. God has a lot. And there is no problem on the God side. There is a lot of stuff. In fact, we are getting rain, Dr. Kaupa. And I'm, I'm, uh, the other day I was praying and I was saying, God, help us to put dams. You know dams? Yeah. We make dams. So that can carry water for six months. Because we get this much water, it carries away our soil, kills people, does all kinds of things. Then eight months later, we don't have enough food and we are going around with begging bowls. And God is saying, I gave you a lot of water. <laughs> what did you do with it? Yes, I gave you a lot of water. What did you do with it? And so our judgment is not far. Looking out there, it speaks to me as a Kenyan. And I'm saying, all this rain, God is so good. He's given us abundant rain. But the problem is me. And so we need to think as Kenyans and also Africans, from the passage I shared, what is it God has given us? How do we bring it to work? How do we do it in such a way that it moves us to the next level? The basic gift in the primary gift is to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. And if you're here, you've never received Jesus as Lord and Savior. God is gracious. God is good. He has opened the door of salvation. You can receive Jesus today as your Lord and Savior. And you can walk out with a resident God, you know, as Lord in your heart, to guide you into this abundance and to cause you to make a difference, not just here, but around the world. We are about to pray and uh, we revisit the gift we revisit our application of the gift and also revisit the area of the celebration of that gift. So the nations may know that somebody is blessed here in Africa and God has put something in their hands. Like that small boy who gave his fish and bread and so many people who didn't know the boy had no idea who this boy was. Because the crowd was so big and the epicenter of the miracle is a gift from a boy into the hands of Jesus, fully surrendered. He let it go, that young boy. He let it go completely, but in the right hands. Somebody at the back of the pack, after they were told to sit, is receiving bread and receiving fish. And they're wondering, where is this coming from? It is coming from the abundance of heaven through a young boy who gives his all in the hands of Jesus, and that makes a difference. And I pray for us, church, we can plant many more churches and we have the capacity of planting churches all over Kenya, all over Africa. And our numbers are many here. These gifts God has given us, when we release them, we shall hear many testimonies like I've just given one here, where I've come from a new church plant yesterday in Naivasha. And we shall have reports from all over the world that churches are being planted. This pastor here you see, my prayer is this, that we shall preach the gospel in Europe. We shall preach the gospel in Asia. We shall preach the gospel in Australia, in New Zealand, 
in, across Africa, in the Americas, North and South. That is the prayer of this, uh, of this pastor. And so whenever I see potential, I mean, amazing congregation like this, do you know I pray doors to open? And when you hear me say visas to be stamped, I'm kind of selfish because I, I'm saying, Lord, uh, this, my congregation must go to the ends of the earth. And my God, if you're going to use their, their platforms, whether engineers, lawyers, doctors, teachers, whatever platform they have, make a way for them into those nations. But then I pray, let them not be selfish with the gift and the blessing. When they get to those nations, may they remember, may they remember the purpose of that opportunity, that they may bear fruit and bear kingdom fruit. That is my prayer. And so as we stand up, uh, we'll be praying, and I'm trusting that somebody, just where you are, you'll be able to make a decision and say, God, use me. Here I am, use me. Here I am, send me. Let's all stand up as we pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you so much for the opportunity to share in your word. And I thank you for the parable of the talents, and uh, my God, what we've been able to gather from there. Thank you for the reminders and Lord, thank you for the prompting, thank you for the encouragement, and thank you for the different dimensions uh, by which this message has come across to us. Now it is in our hands, and my God, I pray that you will lead us into that appropriate response. You have put us in a very beautiful part of the world. And God, you've given us all kinds of gifts, amazing gifts. And Lord, you want us to deploy them and put them to work for the glory of your name. And therefore, today, as a congregation, we appreciate you as the source and the giver. God, you have given, you have done it. From Genesis to Revelation, the created order and everything else. You prepared it, and you have released it. It's already released. And God, we thank you for the gifts that we have, and we bless you for each one of them. My God, I celebrate the fact that everybody here is gifted. And now I pray that you lead us to the next level of awakening, that these gifts, five, two, one, ten gifts, we are supposed to put them into employment. And I pray that as we leave this sanctuary today, my God, you'll have quickened even as you have done to me, somebody in this congregation who will go list those gifts and then commit to put them into employment. And my God, as they determine and as I do so, my Father, with the authority I have in union with Jesus, I pray every hindrance be removed upon their path, every hesitation and fear that causes people not to reach their levels may be cut in Jesus' name. Every chain broken, and if it's a habit or an addiction that has caused that person not to move to that level of fruit, my God, I also pray that you grant power to overcome. I am, my God, releasing your people to rise to the next level of effectiveness and the next level of fruit and the next level of expansion because you are breaking everything that causes us not to move to the next level. When Jabez prayed, oh God, bless me indeed. Oh God, expand my territory. Oh God, place your hand on me. Oh God, keep me from evil. God, you answered that fourfold prayer of Jabez immediately. And many times we are at the place of Jabez where pain has put us down. But God, when we look up, then we are released and free to fly with wings like eagles and to go to the next level. And that is why, Lord, I commission every gift. I release every gift. And I cause it to be employed and invested in the kingdom of God. And that God, much fruit will come back. And Father, I know that as we do this, you are happy in heaven. And God, you are causing us to move to the next level. And therefore, thank you, my God, because I know throughout this week, Doors are open already. You are leading your place to the place of fruit, the place of abundance, the place of expansion, and the place of growth. We break stagnation once again in the name of Jesus. We break this thing of going around the same mountain. You told me uh, verse, chapter 1, verse 6 and 7. Going around the same mountain. We break that cyclic movement. And we release, I release your people, my God, to move to the next level and the next level and the next level. So thank you so much. Now receive these gifts. Now, Lord, lead us to invest these gifts. Lord, through these gifts, lift us now to the next level, to the glory of your name. And I have prayed this prayer 
In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we all say, Amen. let's give a hand clap to Jesus. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. I want you to know you are blessed on Monday. <laughs> blessed on Tuesday. Blessed on Wednesday. Blessed on Thursday. Blessed on Friday. Blessed on Saturday. And this coming Sunday, you are coming back with a blessing. Hallelujah. And a testimony. Now let's lift our hands to God. I want to say six things based on Numbers 26, verse 23 to 20. It's a blessing. Now the Lord bless you, number one. The Lord keep you, number two. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you, number three. The Lord be gracious to you, number four. The Lord turn his face toward you, number five. And the Lord give you peace, number six. Receive it now in Jesus' name. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever. Amen. Shalom. If you are faithful with little, God will make you ruler over much. What a powerful word we have received from our associate pastor, Reverend Simon Mwangi. Always a blessing to hear the word of God and that we have stewardship of God's abundance. And it's our prayer that we will be faithful stewards as we access God's abundance to the glory of his name. We thank the Lord for this month's theme being the open door generosity uplifted kingdom supply. Even as you're exiting through the main entrance, all our exit points continue to share with your neighbor as you encourage them what you have learned this being an uplifted kingdom supply. Just to remind you, we are standing with our candidates for the prayer session um, happening on the 28th of April from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. at the pavilion. We are standing with you, our dear candidates, even as we go forward. May you excel for the glory of God and also we have our family discipleship conference on the 4th of May. This will be held at Nairobi Baptist Church along Gong Road from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. We are hoping to see you there as we tap to divine grace for the family conference. Just to remind you, we have all our other services running out throughout the week. Wednesday, early bath service 5 a.m. in the evening we congregate at 6 p.m. for the prayer service. And Sunday, as our associate pastor has mentioned, we are coming full of blessings because the Lord has been good to us. Indeed, we will testify of the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I have been your host for today, Furawa Shira, wishing you a blessed Sunday and a blessed week ahead. Shalom.